In recent times, the outbreak of the novel coronavirus pandemic, also known as the COVID-19, took the world by storm, almost holding humanity to ransom. Global economy and human activities were put on hold. The poor and the vulnerable were the most hit. Governments of countries rallied round their citizens and tried to provide succor and all forms of relief in the possible ways they could. They worked hard to ensure that their preparedness and response measures were, if not commensurate with the prevailing circumstance, are enough to cushion the expected effects of the pandemic on citizens. Little did they know that they were in for a much longer fight against the deadly scourge uncertainties and all forms of permutations became the order of the day with accusations and counter-accusations permeating the globe. Nigeria was not an exception. Unarguably the most populous country in the continent of Africa and black nations of the world with about 200 million population and 80 million people living below the poverty line, the government tried to beef up response and control measures too. The government said it built laboratories and isolation centers across the country, imposing a travel ban on those coming in and out of the country. Land and sea border closures were also measures put in place to prevent the virus from spreading. But after the first confirmed case was announced on February 27, 2020, of an Italian citizen who visited Lagos and tested positive for the virus, and immediately followed by the second case recorded on the 9th of March 2020, when a Nigerian citizen who had contact with the Italian also tested positive. It was obvious that the government of the day had their hands full in strategizing how best to curtail the poisonous virus. We are always praying and that's all we can do. It is a test from Almighty God, so we ought to accept it in good faith. People are complying very well. Uh, the level of compliance, as you can see, is here. The securities at the gates are quite around trying to enforce. As a battle for the soul of the nation continued, the government of Nigeria seemed overwhelmed and needed help considering the population's strength vis-a-vis -vis the economic downturn experienced prior to the outbreak of the virus occasioned by the global drop in the price of oil, which is the country's main source of foreign exchange earnings and government revenues ensuring people's right to food, shelter and other basic necessities of life, especially for those who lost their jobs or sources of income as a result of the pandemic was a challenge. The coronavirus outbreak further exposed to the inadequacies of the Nigeria's social protection systems with the country's poorest and the most vulnerable at the receiving end. As expected, the President Muhammad Buhari led government slammed a stay-at-home lockdown on the citizenry. The government of Nigeria targeted the lockdown measure on areas with rapid increase of COVID-19 cases. The states were specifically Lagos, Ogun and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, while other states got the imposition of curfews. The situation became more challenging as more than half of the population live below $2 a day and go out on a daily basis to earn a living. In a bid to alleviate the sufferings of the people, government made available palliatives to the people which may or may not have gone round, especially to the targeted population living in the countryside. It is against this backdrop. We have defined and we have a very, very transparent and community involved process um, that helps us identify the most vulnerable in our society. And it is those people that we try and reach with these items. That the leadership of the ESA United Organization of Canada, based in Toronto, a cultural organization of the ESA speaking part of a dub state, Nigeria, swung into action to respond to the yearnings and plight of the people of ESA land by providing relief packages to the poor and most vulnerable in the various communities in the region. Before I answer that question, I want to give all glory to God for the life that he has given us and for the opportunity that he gave to us to be part of history. I also want to thank uh, the Board of Trustees of the United Organization of Canada, Toronto, 
um, the members of the executive uh, committee, the uh, ESCO. I also want to thank the entire body of ESA United Nations of Canada. Um, well, it all started when uh, this pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, set, uh, set in, and uh, we, the ESCOs, came together, rub our minds together, and decided that we need to go back to uh, the place of our origin that gave us so much in life to do something. What why? Because we also got feedbacks, whether from the social media or from relatives at home, parents, that the, the situation uh, that uh, was brought um, about by this pandemic was really dire. And uh, so we said, okay, you know what? With the little that we have individually and collectively, we need to do something. So we decided to uh, put uh, what, they call, what I would call um, security votes. There was members. Uh, we were giving a certain amount of portions of money and uh, we added to that to reach out to people. Um, so our main objective was to reach out to the widows, those that are seniors that are 65 years above. Uh, and um, everything went fine. And the feedback was huge. And I would say to my own um, submission, my own submission would be it is 99.9% success. Just uh, our benevolent heart to reach out to the vulnerable, the less privileged, the aged, you know, in our society. <laughs> With a total of $10,000 Canadian dollars expended on the project, 
Members of the organization took responsibility of the distribution of cash and materials, including foodstuff and other relief packages in their various communities to ensure it got to the target population. Relatives were contacted back home to help facilitate the process. The people of Asa land, who were predominantly farmers, could not go to their farms as a result of the restriction orders. The elderly from 6 to 5 years and above, some bedridden, others, widows and widowers all got a feel of the gesture. 16 different communities in Asa land were reached with palliative materials and with the kind of positive feedback received, the organization is more determined to build on this foundation and embark on bigger projects to further alleviate the sufferings of the people beyond the period of the lockdown. You know, that been is not going to carry a cocoon. When I mean, it's not Mario. Mama, my open. It's only your papa. It's only your own invite. It's only your papa. It's only the good vibe. It's only your left vibe. It's only a good or car vibe. It's only a good and made the vibe. So, Mama, my own bonus. I make it a dinner. Mercury, a young one who could be a united organization, but I'm a martyr. I'm making bell put of the medical, every cake, 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 Medaki when the mamma tea been a bow for it. I wouldn't make a new wife, my big cooking and worry, been a carry with you. Have I heard that my mamma walk on this and my wolf, but I will have one or never know the book. I call you, huh? You don't know. Well, it's not my way. On the one again, Medak boy. On is a every Marehon, it be out my over in the in the Remenaconi, it be there. Those who come on the Ruay, round my bound. I can't bush only rich. I'll name none of Gabby, Gabby, and Mokamiani, no boy, a van, the Murray would turn in a China. Oh, I got that, Mamma, will you have it? No, I get a yellow by. I have to do that good old by. Well, you have to do so that book. What I'm a key by my way. Any on your market, you're back in one of the Nazi laws. My darling, not going to buy it, give away. Oh, I'm a key, you're not going to buy it, give away. What I'm a team, you're not going to buy it, give away. You're not going to buy it, 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 you're not going to buy you don't know how much. Honestly, to the best of my ability, I would love to do more. This organization has been existing for a little more than uh, 15 years. And um, my personal experience of uh, being a member of this uh, great organization is uh, uh, we, we, in fact, we've been able to bring all the Shan speaking uh, uh, men and women and children together. We hold a meeting once a month. And in the general meeting, we talk about the problem and uh, how to sustain the language of Asian some people so that it doesn't go into a sense. And um, we bring in our children up in uh, the language of faith, some people, and the culture. For some of the members of this great organization made up of men and women who were successful in their various fields of endeavor, it is an opportunity to also give back to their home communities that contributed in no small measure to their developments as individuals. For others, however, 
It was more of an emotional experience, being able to touch the lives of the vulnerable and the aged members of their communities back home and reconnecting with their roots. I really feel very fulfilled, very, very fulfilled. I'm so happy that we have organized something here in Canada, taking it back home. I, I say it's 100, or there is something more than over 100 percent. It was, I'm really fulfilled. You can see the smile on my people's face. At least that day, I know they remember me because I've been away so long. And uh, hearing that Evelyn, uh, from through the body he belongs to in Toronto, Canada, has brought such gifts to them. And uh, I am very happy. I really cannot show how satisfied I am to see that goes through. And I use the opportunity to actually thank the whole organization for agreeing to do this uh, to send this gift to our people back home. Very happy to belong to the Fisa United Club of Canada. We have so many chance in this uh, community, so we all try to come together at least to help one another and help the community where we belong. So I'm so happy that we're able to donate some food to the food bank on behalf of the Fisa United Club of Canada. We're very happy and excited that we're able to help people back home. And most of the people that got the, the COVID-19 benefit from this financial are very happy and very excited and uh, they didn't want more. According to them, being part of this laudable project is an eye-opener, a pointer to the deplorable states the people back home are subjected to, leaving much to be done to ameliorate the sufferings. They did not only have to contend with the lockdown occasioned by the outbreak of the deadly coronavirus, but the scare of Fulani headsmen attacks, banditry, and other social vices. I discovered that there are a lot of people who are suffering back home. Some of them have children, they don't, some don't have, some are widow, widowers, and they've been abandoned. Even those who have children, their children don't have jobs because of the nature of the Nigerian economy. So we discovered, we said to ourselves during this COVID, 19, which has really impacted negatively on every, virtually every family. Those who are downtrodden, we saw this very opportunity as a, as a chance for us to help them, to provide for them. So that's why we raise money among us, those of us who are uh, more privileged than them, so that we're able to help those uh, who are downtrodden back home. Because the government over there are not responsive, we cannot also close our eyes to it. God bless us, we are here. It's a special privilege, special grace. That's why we have to help those who are back home. And we are planning to do more. This is just the beginning. We have other programs lined up to help those who are back home, especially those from Eastern land. I was really happy to see how much uh, the smile we put on people's faces back home. That's why it was not that much. But uh, you see how much a uh, little can really uh, make people's day. So I was really happy to be part of that and I hope we can do more for the vulnerable and uh, the less uh, privileged. I'm really honored to be a member of this great association. For the leadership of the organization, the next projects to be embarked upon will provide the locals with basic amenities that will make life a lot more meaningful and by so doing, bring members closer home to the people. Use it to like test the water and see how much the strategy we have we reached to the uh, gra grassroots. So we have seen, uh, we have tested it right now. We've seen uh, the little challenges we have. We have uh, uh, noticed how best we can really reach out. Now, to answer our question specifically, we are now looking at a empowerment process. This, what we did now was just, you know, uh, what's it called, quick fix, if you want to call it that way. Now we are looking at to empower people through strategic training, you know, in a profession that can be, uh, that, that's sustainable, in, in a, a, like a handcraft, trade, and naming. And then, apart from the knowledge we go to, we tend to empower, we also go to, assist them in setting up, you know, in, in terms of establishment of, you know, a bricks and mortar operational locations. So we are also looking at reaching out, especially to the market women, through strategy like soft law that can enable them meet their capital needs, you know, you know, in order to be able to go into, if you like, 
petty trading or a little production you can imagine what something as little as hundred thousand can do for that woman that want to be selling what they call moe moe on the roadside that can feed the whole family so we are looking at this so this is going to be in the realm of empowerment uh, project that will sustain families you know years to come and they will keep living on it the sources uh, of uh, this palliative project has really given us um, has boosted our confidence uh, so much that uh, we are trying to we're putting some other projects some other stuff in place now for instance we know that in this island there, there's no potable water and uh, we also know that if we come together to focus on doing boreholes for the communities, that is going to help a lot. Help not just only the aged, but just everybody. And uh, we also know that we here we live in a part of the world not where you have not just the comfort, not the security, but the children, they, they, they are internet savvy and, you know, and back home, we know our people are also intelligent. So we will, we're also planning to see how we can establish um, training institutions, training schools that will train people, uh, students, teenagers um, to be internet savvy amounting to about 2,530,000 naira. The incentives were distributed in form of cash and food items to a total of 626 families. The organization intends to leverage on the success achieved to further reach out on a larger scale in the nearest future. Overwhelmed by the gesture, some of the beneficiaries showered encomiums on the members of the organization with prayers and good wishes. Their expression of joy was inexplicable, and according to them, the gesture has restored the sense of belonging, dignity, and pride. They say it is an indication that the sons and daughters of Asa land across the world did not forget their roots. United Club of Toronto. Ovi Evelyn Osazua o emehi Me Evelyn gyo hun hun wa wa emin wa re na no re jibo ke ebe ise wugun me ori e na re kiya Me when me we buy obi obi u Enemin wa u na osa bo akpa o ihan havasa We are very grateful honestly the joy from my people today I I don't know how to explain how they felt. But on behalf of my people from Ugun, I say thank you very much to all members of ESA United Club of Toronto. We are very, very grateful. God bless you all. We are grateful. Thank you very much to all of you that made it happen. You put joy and laughter on the faces of our people in Ugun. They say, I should tell you that God will bless you. God bless you all. Si
Like most organizations, the ASI United Organization of Canada was established over 15 years ago to impact its immediate community here in Canada and humanity at large. Alleviating the sufferings of the people in Asa land from the untold hardship meted on them by a government that is unresponsive to their plight is a major priority. However, if the noble projects lined up by this organization is anything to go by, then succor seems to be on the way for the people of Asa land.